Hello, I have some notes here, so I generally speaking know in what direction this video is going to go. And I just want to tell you that there is one point at which I am sure I will feel the need to swear. And, uh, and so I suggest this isn't, and in any case, the subject later on in the video, the subject that I'm going to be discussing is probably not going to be suitable uh, for small children to watch. Just, just warning you. Okay, so the first bit, uh, th this is not what I'm talking about in, in the sense of unsuitable for children. The, uh, I'm going to just go through the history of homosexuality. In many civilizations, especially Judeo-Christian Judeo ones and Islam, which is of course an offshoot of that, um, homosexuality was a sin and it was punished very harshly. And that went on for hundreds, well, thousands of years. Uh, then things started to, as religion started to lose its grip on society, at least in the West, uh, homosexuality was re-evaluated as the church lost its grip on this deviation. Homosexual was then it went into abeyance for a, for a little while. It wasn't so much a sin as a mental illness. And quite frankly, I think possibly some homosexuals might have preferred burning at the stake, uh, which was the, I think, the original punishment or one of the punishments anyway uh, for homosexuality. I think they would have preferred that to the sort of therapies that were inflicted on them in the early 20th century to cure their mental illness. OK, well, when psychiatry uh, did a little bit of an oops um, at that point, psychiatry lost its godlike status and uh, was realised to have had some seriously um, awful practices. I suppose what uh, happened to uh, psychiatry in the Soviet Union might have been one of the reasons people started to reevaluate the, the way psychiatrists conducted themselves. Uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, it, that went into abeyance as well. So homosexuality, again, was simply a state of being and not to be condemned. Uh, but that didn't last very long before homosexuality has now, in our modern times, become an agent of intersectional oppression. That is, if homosexuals are accepted by the wider society, then... Uh, they are part of the wider society and are to be blamed for that. And blamed even worse than ordinary, you know, perfectly normal uh, heterosexual white people because uh, they had gone over to the other side by not being extreme, by integrating with the rest of uh, the community. So they, they are coming in for even more uh, prejudice and bad behaviour than they used to be in many ways. And the lot of a, 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 what I would call a, an ordinary homosexual is not now a very happy one. All right. And what has happened to the gay pride movement now? Well, it's been taken over by cross-dressers. But uh, let's, let's go back to this. Cross-dressing was a, a mental illness as well at one time. And it was usually ordinary heterosexual men who used to take time out of being men by dressing up as women every so often, just as a form of relaxation, as a form of getting away from their the, the role that the the the, the, the masculinized role that was imposed on them by most societies right up until the uh, the the well the 70s i suppose the the 1970s that is so now we have a situation where they're not uh, mad enough either. And I mean mad because the sort of people who appear to have taken over what is supposed to be a homosexual community are not themselves homosexuals. They are nutcases. The whole thing's been taken over by people of the most extreme um, weirdness. 
And I'm going to play you a video, and at this point, uh, I'd say this isn't for, for children. Uh, I'm going to play you a video of one of the acts going on, and uh, it says here it's an Idaho uh, Pride event. <laughs> this isn't uh, the, you know, the, the Sin City, exactly. Idaho is considered by most American chatterati to be in the backwoods. All right. Here goes. Now, can you believe that that person is mentally stable? Yes, this person may have pride in what he's doing, in which case it's the sort of pride that comes into the sin category, I'd say. The, uh, the deadly sin of pride. But uh, is this person, does this person have anything to be proud about? And the, well, in my opinion, no. I suggest that many of you watching this would, would agree with me. And what he was doing at the end of that act, well, whether he uncovered himself or not, it was certainly a highly sexualized way of acting. And it was certainly not suitable to do in front of children. Now, why he was doing that in front of children, the only thing I can think of is that he saw a lot of innocent people there and he wanted to destroy their innocence. Because there's nothing so uh, tempting for evil to do than to destroy innocence. We could see that in the story of the Garden of Eden. I'm not saying that story happened. I'm saying that story reflects a, a way of society. Most of the stories in the Bible, especially early on, they show people human failings. They, they, cate they chronicle human failings. And the, uh, the snake wanted to destroy humanity's innocence. And, and that's what that creature was doing on the stage. He was destroying innocence. And this gave him pleasure. Well, that's, that's the action of a madman. And unfortunately, he isn't the only one. I could pull up dozens. I, I don't have to show them to you. Dozens of uh, videos. Uh, uh, There's a similar one where a, a similar strutting thing was at the head of a pride march and then went right up to uh, some uh, spectators and bent over and twerked at them uh, and then and then strutted off. Oh, thought he'd done something really wonderful. No, he hadn't. And then I saw a lot of comments afterwards showing cheerleaders doing various things. This isn't the same thing at all. I'm not going to go into analysing them, but in most cases, the photographs of the cheerleaders were when the cheerleaders were jumping. So uh, there's one particular photo that was shown. Oh, is this any better? And it shows a cheerleader with her arms and legs out sideways. She's in midair. Well, you, you, of course, that's going to happen if you're jumping like that. But that's a split second. That's not in people's faces. It's not the same at all. But mad people are drawing comparisons as mad people do. This is madness. Oh, I got away from that. Oh, no, I didn't get away from that without swearing because I'm going to do that now. You see... When you're watching cheerleaders, you're standing at a distance and they're jumping about. And if you catch them at just the right position, then it's going to look like they're making, um, uh, doing something, sort of exposing themselves in some way sexually. But they're not. They're being athletic. There's a difference. If you want to read sex into women being athletic, then we really are back into burqa days. So, but when you go to a pride event, when you take your children 
to a Pride event, you know you're going to see people like that complete madman on the stage there. And so here I'm going to swear, what the fuck were those parents doing taking their innocent children to a show like that? And it's no good them saying, oh, we didn't know he was going to expose himself. Of course you do, because you know what has become of Pride events. And you parents who've done that to your children, you have no reason to be proud of yourselves. All right, well, that's it. I'm Granny Opterix. I'm to be found on YouTube, Rumble, BitChute and Minds. I let you know when I've uploaded a video on Twitter, Gab and Parlor. My handle there is at Granny Opterix. And uh, please uh, subscribe to one of those because sometimes, especially YouTube, doesn't let you know or your subscription drops. Please check your subscription. Please like this video. Please pass it on to other people. Share it. And please uh, support my channel if you can, because um, my horse needs shoeing next week. OK, tripped up twice yesterday. And that's because their feet get too long, you see. OK, uh, if anyone wants to know why you have to put shoes on a horse or not, um, I'll make a video about that. Uh, but I have to have a certain number of you telling me that. OK, uh, right. Where was I? Yep, that's it. Till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.